This is our answer. The fact that long-range missiles can strike from foreign launching sites against any part of the United States and Canada has made it essential that we develop a warning system so that we can alert our striking forces. An aggressor nation's best weapon is a sneak attack, an attack that would catch us by surprise and weaken our ability to retaliate. Our defense is based on the fact that we will not initiate the first blow but have the retaliatory forces to make our counter blow extremely damaging to the enemy. In our defense planning, it became the responsibility of the Air Force to provide the necessary warning system, a system that would provide us with a warning of ICBM attack. Within the Air Force, a special project office was established to carry out the program. The new system is called BEMUSE, Ballistic Missile Early Warning System. BEMUSE consists of three radar sites located at Clear, Alaska, Thule, Greenland, and Yorkshire, England. These sites operate in conjunction with the Central Warning and Display Facility at North American Air Defense Headquarters at Colorado Springs. As missiles are launched, they are detected by the BEMUSE radars. Their courses are computed at the sites, and this information is transmitted instantaneously to the control center at Colorado Springs. If the launch is a definite threat to the United States or Canada, our strategic commanders will take the necessary action. Before the first enemy missile has reached our soil, our missiles and bombers will launch their retaliatory strike at the enemy with full force. The Muse was designed to make a surprise attack impossible, and thus is one of our strongest deterrent forces. To carry out the Bemuse program, the Air Force selected the Radio Corporation of America as prime system contractor. Within RCA, the task was assigned to the major defense systems activity of the Missile and Surface Radar Division at Morristown, New Jersey. The urgent need for Bemuse meant tight production and construction schedules. To meet these schedules, RCA and the Air Force selected industries experienced in areas that could be immediately applied to the program. Major subcontractors in the Bemuse industrial team include the General Electric Company in Syracuse, New York, the Goodyear Aircraft Corporation in Akron, Ohio, and Sylvania Electronic Products in Needham, Massachusetts. Under separate prime contract to the Air Force is the Western Electric Company, assigned the responsibility of producing the communication system linking the radar sites and the control center at Colorado Springs. The United States Army Corps of Engineers was assigned the task of building construction and emplacement of heavy equipment at the northern sites. Each major subcontractor in turn selected other industries with which to work. Suppliers of smaller parts were selected until finally a vast industrial team was gathered together in a well-organized effort to produce Bemuse. This team numbers more than 2,900 large and small businesses. Faced with a rigid schedule in a race against time, this industrial team began immediately to put all necessary effort into this program. New facilities were constructed. Skilled people were called upon, engineers, construction experts, data analysts, technicians, machinists, and management to plan, direct, and integrate the activities. Construction of the gigantic equipment required for Bemuse began in all of the industrial plants. Huge scanners for the radars, measuring in feet, 
and accurate to thousandths of an inch were designed and fabricated. Radar components weighing tons were machined to final dimensions with accuracies and balances of a fine watch. The power transmitters for Bemuse fill entire rooms and are the most powerful radar transmitters ever built. The computers for Bemuse, the giant electronic brains which compute in microseconds the trajectory and areas of impact of the ICBMs, are among the fastest and most accurate in the world today. These are the components of Bemuse. Giant and precise, fast and accurate, all designed and in production in a race against time. But the need for these components was at the northern radar sites. Finished parts were transported from the factory by rail and by truck. The rigid schedule was maintained both day and night so that materials would arrive at the ports on time. At all in-transit points of cargo bound for the northern sites, RCA and the Navy assigned transportation experts to route and inventory these vital shipments. Since the open water season for shipping to the sites was short because of the freezing Arctic waters, maintaining schedules all along the line was essential. At the northern radar sites, incoming building materials were immediately readied for constructing the technical facilities. Here, far inside the Arctic Circle, the men were faced with the real task of the Muse. The initial work was at the site in Thule, Greenland. In this land, a part of Denmark, temperatures dropped to 60 below and winds reached 140 miles an hour. The heavy snows which blow from the polar ice cap and cover this land most of the year were shoved aside for the work that had to continue. Using heavy equipment, work was slow and difficult in soil that never thawed and had never before been worked. New construction techniques were devised and put into action so that progress would be steady. Gradually, the buildings took shape and the problems of Arctic construction were overcome. During the winter months, when the seas were frozen, the military air transport service was called upon to airlift supplies that would keep the Muse on schedule. Some of the most vital structures of the Muse are the giant detection radars. The reflectors are larger than a football field and are built to withstand winds of 185 miles per hour. They are constructed of special steel designed for the Arctic climate. After the main framework was completed, the reflecting screening was attached. This screening will receive the radar reflections from any missiles which might pass within the radar range. The reflectors must be positioned with extreme care to permit the trajectory and impact areas of enemy missiles to be determined accurately. To prevent shifts in positions with climate changes, they were tightened and backfilled. Other structures at the radar sites include the transmitter buildings, which house the giant power transmitters for the Bemuse radars. The computer buildings, which house the intricate Bemuse computing equipment. And the scanner buildings, in which the powerful radar beams are generated. of Bemuse. Radars, computers, communications are kept constantly in operating condition by the use of a unique checkout and automatic monitoring system developed by RCA. This system provides a continual check on Bemuse so that high reliability is attained. 
In order to maintain the extensive Bemuse side operations, complete support facilities are required. These include an electronic maintenance shop, an electrical power distribution building, a heated garage and terminal, and a dining hall and emergency dormitory. Normal living quarters and facilities for Greenland site personnel are located at Thule Air Base, some 10 miles from the radar site. Here, constructed for the Bemuse project, are dormitories where the site personnel can enjoy comfortable living quarters. A dining hall where real home-like food is served. And an administration building where the business of directing the Bemuse activities is carried out. These radars and buildings are typical of the site at Greenland and the one in Alaska. The third Bemuse site at Filingdale's Moor in Yorkshire, England, uses another type radar, the dual purpose tracker. These radars, developed by RCA, are housed in specially designed ray domes atop the transmitter buildings. Selected for the British site because of its unique capability, the tracking radar can both detect and track oncoming missiles. Upon acquisition of a hostile missile, a designated tracking radar locks on and automatically tracks the flying object, gathering information on its trajectory and impact area. While the Bemuse industrial team under RCA and the United States Army Corps of Engineers were proceeding with site and stateside construction, Western Electric was completing the rearward communications. Microwave and tropospheric scatter systems were constructed and new submarine cables were laid in the icy waters of the Arctic. The entire system was then integrated into commercial routes to provide a reliable network of communications. In the meantime, the Air Force and RCA were taking the necessary steps to integrate the Bemuse warning system into present North American Air Defense Command facilities at Colorado Springs. New warning and status displays were designed and made ready so that Bemuse could become an active part of the air defense structure of the free world. This is Bemuse, an electronic defense system to warn of enemy attack from the sky. This tremendous progress is a tribute to the military and industrial capability of our country. But although Bemuse shows the ability of industry to answer the military needs of the free world, more than that, Bemuse is the effort of people, free people, thousands of skilled men and women determined to protect their way of life, working in an all-out effort to provide us with the means to preserve the peace so that our families and children can carry on their daily activities without fear of surprise attack. And this is the product of their efforts. The Muse, guarding the free world against the threat of enemy attack.